Hello everyone, it is your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. And I'm Jordan. And we are back after a brief break. For us, uh, yesterday was the day <laughs> that was the video was supposed to go up, but we missed the deadline and I'm like, whatever, cause we got a lot going on this week. So you're getting it today. Uh, before I get any get ahead of myself or anything like that, we did announce the winner of the giveaway last Monday in a community post. The winner of the Exmo Candle Co. candle sent by yours truly, Jordan McKay, self care day, was won by Emerson Peters. Snaps to Emerson, congratulations. Uh, hopefully by the time that this video is premiering, it is already on its way, but I have no guarantees. So sorry about that one. If you are interested in our signature scent, self-care day, and I say this until the freaking cows come home, it smells bomb. You can find it at the link down in the description, or you can just go to xmocandles.com and you can just look for our beautiful or ugly faces, depending on how you see us. So speaking of faces, speaking of faces, <laughs> that was a transition. Speaking of what are we speaking of faces on? That I'm not wearing glasses oh. and everybody's going to be like, where, what? Jordan, what where happening? are your glasses? <laughs> Before we get a thousand comments about it, I am not wearing glasses. I'm transitioning back to contacts. I go back and forth every so often and I have been with my glasses for a while. Yeah. So, yeah. And she got sick of doing the uh, eyelash fills, so she was like, I'm going to revamp up my makeup. So everybody appreciate how radiant Jordan is looking today. She's this got some very amazing simple. product. I am excited to get back to doing more. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> she, she does an awesome job. Also, uh, she has her glasses off, but the contacts have not come in yet, so she's... She's just winging it without being able to see. And I she can't, can't see, see shit. <laughs> so we're so. going to, I am going to be leading Jordan along the way. I have a bunch of notes here. It's going to be awesome. Okay. So this week's topic was decided by our lovely patrons. All of you lovely humans, you can join our Patreon. The link is in the description. Which. I have to note, since our last video has crossed the threshold of 300 patrons, 300 strong on the Patreon. That's insane. Why? We didn't even have to do a 12 hour live stream to hit 300. Or be like Paul and Morgan and Oof. do like a six hour live stream. Yeah, Just they, couldn't, they couldn't even do that. But uh, yeah, anyway. Anyway, so this was decided by our patrons. It was by a Great margin that this topic was decided. Today, we are talking about crazy middles. Crazy middles. And, oh, I did want to mention before we get into it, normally this would be at the end of the month. It's on the first week of the month because of delaying the video. But every the end of every month, patrons pick the topic. And, uh, yeah, we try to cycle through a bunch of them all the time. Crazy middles won by a wide margin. <laughs> so... We are going to talk about Crazy Middles. Crazy Middles is a YouTube channel slash blog. They, they mostly do just the YouTube stuff. Crazy Middles consists primarily of Shelly and Jared Wallace. I couldn't really find too much biographical information beyond that, just because they are, I'll call them micro influencers, kind of. Um, Crazy Middles channel only has 528. 8,000 subscribers, which Only. is the, I, I mean, like in the grand scheme of things. In comparison out, to other family yeah. bloggers. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. We've, uh, we've talked about um, the, oh, the bucket list family, I think has like 5 million. Something like that. Or I, I don't even know. I can't oh, get my shit straight anymore. So it's just too much. Of the few things that I could find just watching, I, I watched way more of their videos than I really cared to, but for the sake of research, it was the easiest thing to do. Um, it sounds like both of them were in the real estate game at some point or another. Shocking. Uh, yeah, I know. It's really big in Mormonism. That's That makes number two families that started in real estate before they turned to YouTube. Cough, cough. <clears throat> and then Not some point, Nelsons. yes. And then some point along the way, they decided after starting up their channel in 2015, 
that they were going to do YouTube full time. So they do daily, if not semi daily uploads to YouTube of their daily life. Are their videos edited? Or is it just like mm, it's very light, like it doesn't feel scripted by any means. Um, daily uploading is significant. Dude, I could not imagine doing a daily upload where I'd have to edit for as much time as I usually. And I do like a really light edit on these episodes. I, I don't know, like not not like light light, but in comparison to other YouTubers, these episodes are super super light editing it is, that but is even a lot then of work. it takes me a couple hours for as much as we do but i guess their uploads are usually like 15 like 25 minutes would be really oh, long okay. for so them it's a little so shorter but it's still. a little shorter yeah better have good internet uploading that often man that would make me want to tear my hair out anyway the channel centers around the the two parents and their get ready for it 21 children crazy right 21 children they uh, they, they kind of have an interesting story it starts when shelly and jerry jared met they've only been married for about 13 or 15 years um and shelly had a daughter from a previous marriage a few years into their marriage they had another child and after they had that child, they s decided that they wanted to start fostering and fostering to adopt Was her children. first marriage a temple marriage? I couldn't find that out, actually. That is interesting. But so, the question that's going to come up is, can Mormons get divorced? I can, I can already feel it. Yes. And yes, yes, they can get divorced. Um, so if she got sealed to this guy, then her other sealing to her previous husband, if they got married in the temple, would have had to have been canceled in order for her to get married yeah. to Jared. Yeah. Uh, that is quite the process. This is no like, hey, let's go to the courthouse, we'll get divorced, which is, you know, fine and dandy in a lot of cases. Um, if you're sealed in the temple and you, for a woman, uh, for a woman, <laughs> <laughs> for a woman, she can't get married to another man and be sealed to another man, period, if she's already sealed to one uh to her one of her husbands already even if that man dies she would have to get the sealing canceled in order to get sealed to another man in short men can be sealed to multiple women women yeah. cannot be sealed to multiple men the only stipulation right now is because the statehood of utah d depended on mormons not practicing polygamy Men can only be married to one living woman at a time. For example, the current president prophet of the Mormon church, Rusty Nelson, is sealed to two women and only one of them is alive. So he is a celestial polygamist. So he is expecting two wives in the next life. Yeah, nice. Anyway, we kind of got off track there, but after they had their their chi child that they had together, they decided that they wanted to foster to adopt. Now I'm gonna link some, we've linked it in the past when we talked about Not Enough Nelsons, some adoption positive language resources in the description. We try to use it as much as possible, but it's not some, a subject that we surround ourselves with I, a there lot. There will be so errors There made. will be errors, give us some grace. Um, I do try to brush up on it whenever we talk about subjects like this. So please bear that in mind. If it's something that you've never heard of before, go ahead and check it out and maybe it can help you in your life and your relationships and we love to hear it. When they decided to start fostering to adopt, they wanted to take children, plural, that were siblings, which in my mind, in the foster system, I think that's fucking awesome, honestly. And I'm gonna say, sing my praises up front this time because in the Brooklyn and Bailey video, people were like, oh, you're just trying to shit on them. And we didn't really come full circle until the end. But I think what they're doing is awesome because A, everybody talks about how messed up the foster system is. True. Which it is because private adoption is a huge business so why would anybody try to make 
money in the foster system when private adoption is already such an established industry. Mind you, the Mormon church has their own private adoption agency. They do. I totally forgot about that. Fun fact. Yeah, the fact that they're going through the foster system, they're taking in children who are siblings. That way, these siblings don't have to be split up, which in a lot of cases is extremely traumatic because, you know, you're taking out of, taking out of a traumatic situation and then you're also separated from those people who possibly could be safe to you it's just i can't imagine so wallace family good job i think it's really awesome yeah in one situation yeah awesome Uh, they are extremely personable people they're i mean they're people that i feel like my parents would have been friends with most up. Mormon influencers, I feel like, are. Yeah. Aside from, yeah. like, Ruby. Yes. <laughs> and, and and most of them we've looked at, and I'm like, these are nice people. I could totally see going over to their house for dinner. Definitely not Ruby. Fuck Ruby Frank. <laughs> I will say that. I don't even care. Just to drive the point home, we don't hate Mormons. We hate Mormonism and the culture that it fosters and inevitably creates in people because there's a line right yeah. there's being part of a culture that teaches you and indoctrinates you with homophobia and transphobia and racism and things of that nature but at some point you have to become your own individual person as yeah. many of us have so there is a level of accountability that still needs to be had despite what type of organization that you came from especially how the Mormon church is run. It's not like that information is deeply concealed and they're, you know, held underground and have no idea. This is a little bit different. Yeah. And we'll, we'll definitely expand on that. And in this one and in the subsequent videos, there's no shortage of evidence and things like that. So the first experience that I, I, I guess we both had really was, I remember watching a video from them uh, a while back when we were first doing the uh, the Mormon Influencer series. And I was totally just taken aback by how stupid this upload was. Um, it has since been removed from <gasps> YouTube. Gasp. Uh, probably just unlisted or something like that for pretty obvious reasons. But they made two different videos talking about the rule book that they have, which is a binder of rules and expectations that they have for kids who come through the house because they have adopted 19 children, but they have had over 60 foster children come through their home total. So some of these, some of these kids end up being reunified with their biological families and things like that, which they do, and they do support reunification and things like that which is good it sounds to me like they'd encourage yes i think um, so communication with their biological families if that is wanted by the child which i like definitely um but a lot of these kids pass through their house and and then they go on a journey kinship placement or back to their original fan like their biological family or exactly so they have a rule book a binder of things and they went through the whole rule book and the biggest red flag (laughs) right at the start of the video was they were like we were with a production company and they really didn't want us to do this video but we're not with this production company anymore so we're gonna do it uh yeah i wonder why (laughs) i wonder why that production company was telling you not to put it out probably because it sucks and now here we are You removed it from YouTube, but it was still up on Facebook. So I was able to watch it. (laughs) Yeah, apparently. I can see where the uh, disconnect is with the... Anyway, I thought that was really funny to start out with. Um, There was a lot of kind of no-nonsense rules, especially like in foster situations, like or in, in any situation, just like keeping technology and social media kind of on a more tight leash so i mean when you've got 21 kids that's pretty how manageable really is that we've talked about that before and it's just it's really not it's crazy they like oh we don't 
ask about dinner. We write it on the chalkboard or whatever and things like that. But then there's the more problematic rules, which I did take note of. Uh, the first one being all kids are required to go to church, but they are not required to join. So they're required to go, but they're not required to join. But when they go, the Sunday school teachers, every speaker over the pulpit, everything points to them wanting to join. And they said, you know, this is like a, this is something that we do as a family. So we want everybody to feel included. So it's great that they're like, no, you don't have to join, but it does feel coercive just because of the nature of what the Mormon church teaches about being baptized and joining the church. And families can be together forever so long as you're a good noodle and you keep the commandments and you are not um, an LGBTQ plus person and as long as you pay your tithing and all this other bullshit. So it's not even necessarily, I think the parents definitely play a role in pressuring because, and that goes for any, you know, any person, right, that has to go to church because their parents tell them that they have to. But I feel like with foster children, it's very much a like, I don't want to say golden investigator, but almost a golden investigator dynamic where it's like they've lived such, and this is like generalization, but they've lived such tragic lives and they come from so much trauma and they've yeah. just been through so much. They just need the gospel. We just need to baptize them into the church to make sure <laughs> that they can be with their family, whoever they want to be with in the next life. Um, and it's just like a... It almost seems kind of urgent. It's like an urgent situation. Like we need to save these kids. Yeah, for sure. And get them involved so that they can have the positive experiences um, that the church provides. Thinking that independently they wouldn't have those experiences. Um, and kind of, I don't know. It Depending on the kid, it can be a nod at, you know, kind of ignoring their own culture. Yeah. You know, like pushing all of or that their to own the side. Family traditions yeah, or their own how they personally feel about their own faith journey because, you know, these kids were people before they got put into this Mormon family. And so if we're not yeah. honoring that, it's it seems a little dismissive. Totally. A couple things that I was thinking of. Uh first off, Golden Investigator, for those who are unaware, um, is a missionary term which I used even. Golden investigators usually fall under the preach my gospel section of who to find. Preach my gospel is the basically missionary handbook of what to teach, what to say, how to go find people so that you can get them in the baptismal font and you can feel good about yourself uh, or feel good about what you're doing for the Lord, quote unquote. Um, so when they talk about in that book who to find, they list off just like traumatic events, like somebody who's recently had a death in the family, somebody who's recently moved, which I guess is lesser traumatic, but is still stressful. Somebody who's recently had a baby, things of that nature. So they pick on vulnerable people. Yeah. Can you imagine your entire life has just been uprooted and you've been placed in a play in a, a place where you don't know the people that are there they've got other kids but now they're taking you to church and they're telling you all these things so children are golden investigators i mean pure and simple in my yeah, mind they are most of the people that i saw baptized on my mission were children i did little baptismal interviews for so many goddamn nine-year-olds all the time and I 100% would edge away from the questions that I was supposed to ask about the law of chastity because I didn't want to have to explain that to a nine-year-old because that's not my, <laughs> my job as a missionary to explain to nine-year-olds that if you touch yourself, that is a sin and you shouldn't be doing that and you will be punished if you do that kind of thing. So mind so. you... They, are you going to get to the point where they talked about them being baptized? 
Yeah. I'll I talk would about bring that, that up because all of them were asked that question. Yeah. So all of them were asked that question, but I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, but I did want to get on to other the, the other rules that were in this book. Another thing that they do, and I'm assuming they still do this because just because the video was taken down off of YouTube doesn't mean that they don't do this anymore. But random drug testing of these kids, which... It's just kind of assuming that kids who are in the foster system are delinquents and things like that, which I don't like. Um, do they drug test their own kids? That's the question. I would fucking hope that they do. And if there's a discrepancy there, then we have an issue. If yeah. there are people that just randomly drug test their children at all times, then that's one thing. But... That, yeah, that not, doesn't really exactly uh, build trust with your children yeah. if you're. I'm not a fan of that, but I'm not going to say it's like shitty parenting. Yeah. But if it's, I'm going to do it for the foster kids that I have versus I'm going to do it for my biological children. And we're saying that to make the distinction in their mind because that's yeah. the way it comes off. Well, and they make that distinction too. So, so that's the reason those terms are being used. But that's, that's a semi red flag yeah they offer an incentive 50 dollar reward for passing each drug test i don't know if they have like a schedule that they just rotate everybody on or something like that neither uh neither the oldest kid or the other biological kid was featured in that part of the video so i don't know she had the the oldest kid had already moved out they only have 12 kids in the house right now most of them are old enough to live on their own and their numbers are going down. Even this week, I think like they posted like two kids moving out. Wow. Which is weird to post a video about. Anyway. So that one's notable, but not crazy. It's yeah, it can't, it could be a point of weirdness for me. I just think it feels kind of odd. Next one. If a, friend is deemed a bad influence uh they are not allowed to be friends how would you describe a bad influence yeah because in utah that typically means not mormon yeah they live in arizona in mesa which is still it's mormon central yeah. for arizona of the two missionary companions that i had that at one time or another lived in the united states one of them was from Mesa, so there, there we, you go. I think we talked about this in the last <laughs> video, but there is a lot of Mormons in Arizona. Like, it's turning yes. into its own, like, mini Utah in some places. Yeah. That's why Arizona is included in the Morador that stretches from Arizona all the way up to Idaho, yes. passing through Utah. So it wouldn't be unrealistic if they're, like, in a really concentrated Mormon community yeah. to be like, oh, well, if this random kid out of... 10 there's one that isn't mormon it would be easy to assume that would be the yeah. bad influence the bad influence yeah i don't i don't like that one because it's so damn ambiguous like if they outlined some things and at one point <laughs> one of the videos that i'll mention maybe later they had mentioned that one of the cousin kids ended up going to a sleepover and getting a tattoo <laughs> I guess that would be a bad influence, uh, but it does feel pretty ambiguous and kind of like at will employment where they can at any time just be like, we don't like this kid, so you're not hanging out with them anymore. So yeah, that one was interesting. This one is still kind of, it, it's not really problematic, but you're only allowed to date at 16 and only in groups, which... What Oddly does that enough, remind you of? Lines up with the Mormon standard of dating. And they did say in the video that you can have a girlfriend or boyfriend if you can handle that. But what 16-year-old can handle that? Mormon, like Mormons by so, definition don't allow that for a reason. Yeah. So, and a lot of that is... It's nice to have a label like you can call them your boyfriend, but that doesn't mean your mom's going to let you hang out with them by yourself. Yeah. So. Not allowed to hang around with people by yourself. You're not supposed to go on solo dates with them and things like that. Because that tracks that doesn't leave enough room for the Holy Spirit. If you do that, 
could send you down a path. Yeah. Holy Ghost goes to bed at midnight, folks. So you Real better be talk. home by then. Yeah, they had like a curfew thing. They were pretty like way more understanding on curfew than my parents were growing up where they're like, yeah, call us 20 minutes before if you're not going to make it. And then, yeah. Which, oh my God, I, I would what never. Kids, what, what kid is going to call 20 minutes before? If I was late for curfew, my mom would have locked me out of the house and I would have right. slept in the backyard. <laughs> That's not even an exaggeration. I would have called 20 minutes before and they would have been like, well, you better, you got 20 minutes. <laughs> so i didn't have anyway. curfew because i snuck out of my house so there was no curfew nice. applied <laughs> nice i knew that i didn't learn that right now so the mormon gold standard of dating at 16 and up the last one of note which i thought was funny they they said only if you're gonna have only girls can have i don't know if they specify only girls can have piercings but you're only allowed to have one piercing in each ear and they were like, why, why do we only do one hole? We don't know. I know. Maybe I it know. was a little uh, prophet. You may have heard of him. Gordon Hinckley in the late 90s. He basically just laid it out that women should only get one piercing in each ear. Because anything more than that makes you a hu- I don't know. I don't know why he more than one but it was a big deal like if you had it more than one in your ear like more than one piercing you took them out i knew a lot of older women who took their additional ones out because that wasn't a rule before that wasn't something that was regulated and if you had more than one going forward it was like a sign of rebellion like if you were i had two obviously (gasps) because it's me right and it was very much a like point of obvious rebellion because people were like oh my god she has two ear piercings so she is rebellious it seems stupid but it's significant in mormondom yeah and people will argue until they're blue in the face no gordon b hinckley said that it, it wasn't like a commandment it was it was in the for the strength of youth that constantly was talked about when i was younger that's a mormon so, pamphlet they tell people not to pierce their ears more than one time. That's just for girls. Boys were not allowed to pierce their ears whatsoever. Period. And that's not even, don't even get me started on anywhere else. Literally only your ears were allowed to be pierced. So True story. That is why. Don't say you don't know. You know why. It's Gordon Hinckley. It's the standard of the church. Like, it's okay Like to only do one. It's manageable. Cuts down on risk of infection. I mean, you got so many ears in the house but they say they don't have any issue with tattoos or things like that which tracks because i couldn't find any of their older kids that were still mormon at all really like even her first daughter is definitely not mormon gasp i know her first and i'll talk about her in a little bit so that was the rule book video uh yeah pretty pretty good reason why they don't have that one on youtube anymore but that brings me to the next video which i said we would circle back around to which was a four-year-old video that i found it was a baptism video and oh my god it was like the church could not produce better propaganda (laughs) seriously i couldn't really find any like overt church experiences from that point like even the easter video that they put out they didn't even mention going to church or anything like that which just felt odd but jared was still wearing garments i've got an eye for garments. we got garment checks we got garment checks um but this baptism video man it they put all the kids or like the older kids and some people from the ward singing a child's prayer, which comes from the children's songbook that's officially from the church. It's a official church music material. And oh my God, it's, oh, it's one of those ones that's like, it always evokes emotion in people. people like even cry. if you take away the lyrics from it, it is still like a pretty... It's a well-written song. Like, I'm not going to lie or anything like that. But it was basically just the first half of the video was kind of like a montage of, I think it was five of the kids getting baptized all at the same time. 
by their dad. And yeah, it was pretty wild. So this- All of them in their white jumpsuits and everything like that. I don't recall. You're not supposed to film like in the baptismal font area. It is explicitly prohibited. Yeah. That's for all Did they church. change it though? No, I don't think so. Ruby just does it because I don't think she gives a shit. she's a dummy. Well, no, she doesn't film the actual baptism. Yeah. Now. I, I remember seeing them walk in. I don't think they filmed the part where they dunk them. Oh, okay. I can't, I can't recall right now. Why do they tell you not to film it? Because probably somebody's going to say something sacred. inappropriate. That's probably the real reason, but they say it's sacred. But the same thing goes with church meetings. Like even regular yeah. church on Sunday mornings, you're not allowed to record. You're not allowed to record in the chapel. You're not allowed to record in the baptismal font. Sus. At least when it's not, when it's being used. Sus. Sus. So that was like a bishop's wet dream. It was, oh, it was six baptisms in one go. Not Jesus. not five. And they were all young. So yeah, it was the, the nine-year-old baptisms of my mission all over again. Uh, the other half of the video was the more concerning part, which the six kids being baptized into a church and they're probably going to get harassed by some missionaries in the future if they haven't already been. Uh, the other part of the video was a Q&A with a kid that they had not yet adopted, so his face was blurred. And that kind of rubbed me, the, especially the questions that they were answering about this kid. It, it They weren't like giving any sort of identifiable information I don't know. Maybe they were kind of playing it a little bit loose, if you ask me. But it was more the dynamic that they had with their viewers at this point. I don't know if it's changed. This was on... Oh, no. This one was back on YouTube. But, like, the viewers were asking questions like, when can we see his face? When are you going to adopt him? Like, this is not the kind of relationship that well-adjusted humans have. Like, you're not entitled to any information about any person's children. And when you're putting your kids out on the internet like that, you start to build up this relationship where people do feel entitled to that kind of information about your kids, which just doesn't sit right with me, like, there shouldn't, at all. In my opinion, there shouldn't be any kind of that going on. Even if you're blurring their face, you know you're doing something you probably shouldn't, yeah. first of all. If you, if you have to blur their face, if you have to... Work your angles. Did they change? Did they alter the voice at all? No. That's identifiable information. See, I used to be a teacher and now I'm a social worker. I don't play around with that shit. That's still identifiable information. So, so don't do things like that. Yeah. It's not fair. They're underage. They're it's exploitative. Like that's exactly what it is. Like I don't care what your intentions are. It's it's odd. It's off. It's bizarre. It's not it's not yeah. okay behavior. Yeah. And if you're a viewer and I don't mean to say that, to be mean or anything like this, but you're not entitled to anything about anybody's kid. When I'm in public, I don't even like to tell people my kid's name. Like, it's none of their business. He's adorable as shit. Just enjoy that for what it is. But I, I really don't want to share anything like that. People on so. the internet are nuts. It is not the first time that a Mormon influencer, like, Bonnie Holing comes to like comes to mind first who yeah. had somebody randomly come to her house and like invite themselves in because she watch she watches her on YouTube and was like, oh, yeah. my God, I watch your stuff. And this woman like came into her house like people on the Internet are whack and don't have boundaries. So if you're not willing to put those boundaries in place, it's going to be violated. And who's to say how it's going to be violated? That's a scary position to put yourself in. Yeah, I feel like. This is like the boomer in me coming out. <laughs> sorry, sorry to my to my boomer audience, but like I feel like we've been lulled in this like false sense of security about the the safety of the internet cuz it's really not a safe place. There are people out there who can see the background of your video and identify they'd be like I know exactly where that is and if they are weird enough, they post it somewhere and it just takes one person so i don't like that kind of stuff makes especially with a kid that isn't adopted by you yet i don't think that kid was adopted so he ended up going on you know 
who knows where onto some other place maybe reunited with his family but you know then somebody know could know that he recognize his voice yeah or or something of that nature so it's weird that kind of goes in tandem with this next point that i wanted to make was at i can't remember what video i was watching but they said that they don't share like personal things or like sensitive information about bi biological families and i had just watched another video where one of their kids was talking on the phone with his biological father about how he um I'm, I don't even really want to share too much about the story because it painted this kid's biological mother in a really bad light. Um, and it was just not a great situation to begin with. But like even a situation like that where he's talking about the story on the phone, I don't even know if he really knew that he was being recorded. I would hope that he was in the know talking about this stuff that is what I would deem sensitive information and then after they like reunite him with those kids like this it's just not something for the internet it's especially not. not something to be monetized on the internet and it's one thing for them and fucking tiffany does the same shit it's one tiffany thing Nelson will come for you oh god <laughs> We've already come for her. Her video's already up. If you haven't watched our Not I Enough know. Nelson's video. But it, it just, they all do the same thing. And I, I am here for telling your story. If you are like open and vulnerable and willing to tell it, I am absolutely support and encourage that. However, you should not have to do that or have parts and pieces like, you know, yeah, disseminated to the internet prior to you being 18, because those choices at that point aren't yours. And if you do get reunited potentially with original family members or you find new family members and, you know, maybe somebody heard you say something shitty about them because your mom had the freaking camera on. Like, what kind of position does that put a child in? Yeah. Like, let's just not film these things or talk about these things and post them on the internet. Like, if you're truly editing your videos, edit that shit out. It's not that difficult, really. The thing is, is you get into this space where you're like, oh, we need views and interesting stories and people like emotion. Like we are emotional creatures, despite how much a lot of uh, toxic masculinity there is still in the world. Uh, so it seems really alluring to put things like that into a video because you're going to end up making money off of it. So that's the kind of shit that we don't play around here. It's not necessary. These kids don't necessarily understand what's going to happen down the line. And they're not even the ones who are putting it out there themselves. They may say that they're okay with it. Well, but... let's talk about the baptism piece for a minute because okay. this just occurred to me and I hadn't thought about this before. If those are, you know, their adopted children, Right? Because they had adopted them by that point when they got baptized, right? I thought you said adapted. Adapted. You just went Boston right there. <laughs> <laughs> adapted. <laughs> Listening to too much Michaela. Um, you, they were adopted by that point, right? The ones that got baptized? Uh, I think so, yeah. If they weren't, From what I could tell. that's an issue. But if yeah. they were, if they had adopted them by that point, did they, I mean, if their family, like the family that they, if they choose to, you know, communicate with their previous family that they came from did they go to them did the parents did these two go to their parents and ask for permission to baptize them because i would venture probably not yeah pro likely not which in is a lot of cases because disrespectful because on the the baptist i'm trying to think of what it's called the baptismal record mm -hmm. um you just need a signature of a guardian. I I don't know if it's different here in the United States when I was doing it. I, you couldn't have expected people to have an ID or anything to verify that with. I hope that's not how it is. You shouldn't ever expect anybody to have ID to prove something like that because reasons that I don't need to get into in this video. But, but the other side of that is also these, we've talked about this before, baptism within the Mormon church is... 
a legally binding document. A legally binding <laughs> document, and it is coercive because you are basically your family will tell you that it's your choice and you're making the decision, but every other eight year old around you is making those same decisions and they're getting parties and treats and, you yeah. know, family get togethers and presents. And if you don't get baptized, you don't get that. You don't get all that stuff and all your peers are doing it. So why wouldn't you want to do that? So is it really a choice of their own? Yeah. No. And even if they feel like they are making that choice, they're eight years old. All the incentives are going to outweigh not getting anything. I don't care if they said, yes, they wanted to get baptized at that point. It doesn't matter because they're eight years old. That's not informed consent. And they're not able to make their own decisions at that point. Even if they did choose later in life, they want to get baptized. Great. Absolutely. Encourage it. If that's what you want to do. Awesome. But you need to be 18 and able to make that decision for yourself. Definitely. Which also means that they were asked the baptismal questions, which include what? Oh, yeah. The the big one, which I said I skipped over when I could, uh, which was the law of chastity question. So, and that one is deeply troubling. I'm coming to this re realization right now because if you have experienced sexual abuse, that can be a really distressing thing to answer when you're eight or nine years old. So preach because in a lot of cases, there is no distinction between you were sexually abused and you are committing a sin by participating in sexual activities. There so, is no distinction made because that's what I thought. And that's what I thought until I was well into my teens. And so lots of confusion there. Inappropriate question to be asking an eight year old. Definitely. Definitely. Do you keep the law of chastity? The law of chastity also means touching yourself. So we're asking eight-year-olds whether or not they touch themselves. So that's what we're asking these kids. It's really awesome. That's, I hate that. That's not a good thing. I'm going to put a quote on the screen. Sorry, listeners, but I'm not reading this shit. Uh, do with this information as you will. This is verbatim. I can source it for you. That is a quote from Spencer W. Kimball, rest in piss. <laughs> um, I wish it, we had had that one to the top of our brainium when we were talking about it. So sorry for the uh, kind of run around there. There's also another little clip that I came across. They were talking about one of their children who ended up uh, because of one of the rules being no violence being removed from their home. And they, I will take them at their word that this is the reason but in this Q&A that they were doing, people were asking if he was removed from their home because he came out as gay. And there's this little clip. Well, sort of it's it, because there are a lot of assumptions by fans that we kicked him out of the house when, when we found out he was gay, which is no. so not true. We already knew he was gay. Yeah, yeah. and in fact, we didn't know if he knew. Yeah. One of your kids is in the LGBTQ plus community. This is another one um, that we see a lot. Um, it's, yes, we do, but it's not yeah. something that, um, I guess, how do I put this? I think everyone ex thinks because of our religion that we're like against the community. Yeah. And that's not how we feel at all. So you kind of just told on yourselves, maybe say that again one more time, but a little bit slower. <laughs> Because well, people think if, these things. If you have to preface it with that r reason right there, if then don't align yourself <laughs> with that organization. Don't. If you're yeah. so inconvenienced by the fact that people ask you about it, this is the same shit from Brooklyn and Bailey, where they yeah. were like, "People shouldn't even have to ask us the question." Yeah, like and, they should have to ask you the question yeah. because you're part of the church, and the church says that gay people are terrible. So. Yeah. And I, somebody came to me in the comments on that one and they were like, why is that a bad thing? Like, and I appreciate that question because it might not seem obvious, but it comes from a place of extreme privilege where you as a presumably cis heterosexual person don't have to entertain that question ever because it doesn't apply to you. You don't ever have to like 
make leaps and bounds of a change in your life because people aren't asking you that question all the time or anything like that. It doesn't have anything to do with your life. So it's really easy to just be like, I don't understand why this is a problem because for so many people, especially in this state this year for trans youth is such a big deal. The state of Utah targeted essentially one or two children with a law. Two children in the entire fucking state. They wrote an entire bill to keep those two girls out of sports. So. So, yeah, you're going to get it, asked that question. Gotta, we got asked that question. You can't just sidestep it because it's a big deal for a lot of people. And when people are supporting stuff, something they want to see themselves represented in the stuff that they're consuming so it's perfectly fair to ask that especially when you come from a religion that is constantly saying that lgbtq plus folks and those that affirm them are committing a sin and are going to fall short of the glory of god because of that so and your options are get married to a person of the opposite sex or stay celibate so that's so that's that if you align yourself with the mormon church that's like standing outside the westboro baptist church protesting and then when people ask you about it on the internet be like i don't even know why you ask me questions about this like you're participating in the organization of course you're gonna get asked questions about that you're gonna ask questions like i'm yeah. sorry you don't get to talk out both sides of your mouth like you can't yeah. align yourself with homophobia and then wonder why people ask you if you're homophobic yeah. <laughs> like, you can't be complicit in that kind of situation. And it's the cognitive dissonance to think that I, you know, appreciate, love the gay community, the trans community, but yet I still pay tithing to an organization that actively oppresses and discriminates against them. Like, something's not matching up here. <clears throat> we haven't forgotten about Prop 8, and we never will. No. And if things continue down the path that they're going on right now, we might very well see something like that in the future. So it's not of very small consequence that the church is continuing to push things like this. Yep. Don't end up on the wrong side of history. Anyway, um, I did want to bring up the fact that it is a family vlogging dynasty up in this bitch. Uh, the Crazy Middles channel has a sister channel, pun intended, run by Shelly's sister, Crystal, called Crazy Pieces. Uh, that's the first one, uh, among other channels. So Crazy Pieces is run by Crystal and Aaron Pettit. Uh, a little interesting tidbit about them. Crystal was married to Aaron when she was 17, and he is four years older than her, which... I couldn't find if he served a mission or not. I didn't watch any of their videos because we were doing a video about crazy middles. Didn't want to get too far into the crazy pisses, pieces bit. <laughs> the crazy pisses. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if I leave that little uh, tongue twister in there or not. I couldn't see if he had served a mission or not. Uh, but the four year difference at the time, you had to be 19 in order to serve a two year full time mission. He would have been 21, coming home. It's kind of like this gross joke culture thing that when missionaries come home, they like girls kind of around the same age as when they left, which especially now usually means that they are underage. So that's a little gross. gross. Um, she was 17. They got married the day before their her 18th birthday, so I guess I'll let it slide. But it's still a weird, gross culture thing that I don't like. Uh, the name Crazy Pieces comes, I think, from their first video. They talk about the pieces that they're missing from their family, which is reminiscent of Jordan's favorite movie musical from Mormonism, Saturday's Warrior. Yes. Speaking of Saturday's Warrior, as McKay said, it is absolutely my favorite Mormon movie. And it is my favorite because it is the cringiest shit you will ever see in your life and you will never forget it. I promise you that. So I can attest to this. I've seen it one time. You'll never forget. And it. I will never recover. The best part about Saturday's Warrior, at least one of the best things, is it came out in the 80s. So it is production quality is 
poor. We're, we're talking Mormon niche movie in the 70s or 80s. <laughs> so it's not ideal, but they actually remade the movie in 2015 with a brand new cast, brand new everything. We I actually Don't paid for it. Part of it, I was part of their little Kickstarter. Oh, Jordan was on campaign. the Kickstarter campaign. So we are thinking about having a watch party with our patrons where we all hop on and watch this movie together, chat about things, we'll answer questions as we go and laugh hysterically at the stupidity. And it will be highly enjoyable for all parties. So definitely. Yeah, this will be open to any. It's not like a top tier patron thing. Any of our patrons will be able to do it. We don't have really any details on that yet. Only Stay thing we tuned. know is we wouldn't. I, I just because of DMCA and things like that, I wouldn't want to. Uh, we couldn't do it on YouTube. Couldn't do it live stream to YouTube. So just to avoid situations like that, we'll just keep it to our our awesome patrons, which is going to be super cool. So yeah, anyway. that's that's kind of like a Saturday's warrior idea where everybody's got this family already formed in heaven and then it all has to come together come together with all the pieces so. if the parents are listening and trying to determine how many children there are because it's a guessing game so you have to figure out how many children that the lord has designated you to have and there is this concept within mormonism that many mormon mamas feel that there's still one left or there's still one waiting yeah. And a lot of times that sentiment overrides their thought on wanting more children. I know somebody personally who was given revelation that they needed to have one more child and they were absolutely devastated because pregnancy wrecked them physically and emotionally with all previous of their five children and felt that they needed to have one more. And so she was absolutely grief stricken. And they went on to have that sixth one. This is the kind of dynamics, this toxic yeah. dynamic that's happening within Mormonism. <laughs> and people are like, no, you don't. Have, it's not the more kids you have, the more VIP heaven you get. But I mean, what is that messaging? This is the fucking idea. And even if it's not doctrine, it was like a widely held belief for a lot of people for a long time. That is still so, prevalent in to culture the day. today. Yeah, like, to today, absolutely. Honestly. So anyway, that's crazy pieces. Uh, crazy pieces and crazy middles come together with the mom bossiest awesome channel uh -oh. called Crazy Mom Hustle, uh. <laughs> which, you know, uh, I don't want to rag on like stay at home moms or anything because I'm a stay at home dad. So I it's really don't have weird. any culture Shit to talk on yeah and there's a lot of weird culture it's like the silly and like the oh my god being a, a stay-at-home mom is so hard like we understand that i i sometimes no want to that. just kick the bucket when i have to stay <laughs> home with my kids sometimes but you know we do it and stuff like that the content's well produced it's not the worst thing in the world, they do a lot of like just chatting, answering Q and A's and stuff like that. They haven't do, done too many channels, but they already have 55,000 subs. So I can't really talk shit. <laughs> Got us beaten out. Oh, Crazy Pieces just barely beats out Crazy Middles with 552,000 subs. Um, so they are they can do that really easily. They live really close to each other. There's a lot of crossover between the two, I guess the three channels, technically. Um, they're always at each other's houses. The Easter video, they were at Crystal's house doing an Easter egg hunt with all the family. And Crystal did a video about it. And Shelly did a video about it. So It's very much the Mormon family dynamic weird. with the other ones. With, you know, eight passengers and the whole freaking grandparent down to teenager channels yeah. and the same thing with brooklyn and bailey and tiffany nelson and everybody just kind of branches off from everybody else into this like whole <clears throat> mormon camera in your face dynamic yeah and it doesn't even stop there there are child youtube branch offs that have happened as well their oldest daughter kylie has a channel it's called Reedhead homestead 
um, which she does like DIY kind of home decor things with her husband, which I mean, just off of watching it was nothing. It's kind of like the vibes of the, the gains. They're just like renovating their, their own home. So no qualms there. And I think it's pretty cool. And they've got, they both got full-time jobs and they're renovating their home. And Mormon bloggers have full time jobs. I know. Well, they're not Mormon. They were drinking coffee in the video. So So they're fine. So they're good. They're good. No qualms there. Um, She was already pretty old. She is, I think, my same age. Oh, okay. So seven years ago, she was already an adult by the time they started their channel. There you go. Uh, Crazy Good Life is another one of the child channels uh their daughter Lacey, they have 163,000 subs which is pretty big uh shelly also has a nephew alex pettit that's the name of his channel he has 91,000 subs uh just going on the r slash crazy middles subreddit on reddit uh there was a lot of kind of cringe stuff about alex so good luck bruv with 91, I, I watched a smidge of one of his vlogs, and with 91,000 subscribers, your house needs a few more lights, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. And then there is Crazy Duos, Duo, Crazy Duo, plural, singular? I don't remember. My notes says Duo, singular, um, which are two of the nieces of Shelly. They have 107,000 subscribers. So this is like always something that bleeds out like because Crazy Middle started in February 2015 and Crazy Pieces started in August of 2015, just a couple months behind them. And they did a lot of the same kind of stuff to start out. And their whole stick is kind of the exact same. They foster kids. They adopt kids. So it's kind of exhausting. Why? <laughs> seeing kind of all the same shit all the time just in a different flavor once again we return to the same topic at hand for every mormon influencer that we discuss every mormon is not a terrible person we do not hate mormons in general when we present these influencers to you particularly the ones that have a decent sized platform the same thing always stands We are here to direct your attention to the problematic aspects of Mormonism and by supporting these people who are probably paying tithing if what's-his-face is still wearing his garments, I'm more than inclined to think that that's still happening, then you're supporting the church via that outlet. Because remind, if you're new here, Mormons have to pay 10% of their income to the Mormon church. It is a requirement if you want to be able to participate in church worship activities so you cannot do it but then you'll basically not be able to do anything (laughs) so you won't be able to participate in the holiest pinnacle mormon experience and so they are likely what you're also kind of a second-rate citizen oh yeah yeah if you don't yeah because your bishop knows and they're like trying to get you to pay it again to do it yeah yeah so it's not like you can just like not pay tithing and like go on your merry way. It's not really going to happen. You will not be left in peace. No. That's for sure. Definitely Hello. not. So by supporting them, whether it's watching their videos, following them on Instagram, I don't know how much ad content they post or how much sponsorships they get. I honestly did not even look at their Instagram. Okay. So. so depending if they have that many subscribers and they upload daily, I imagine. They get... They get a few, I imagine, at least. And so that money is directly going to the Mormon church by way of 10%. So that is something to keep in mind if you watch and support these channels. Um, That just kind of, if you're new here, I'm not going to detail for you why the Mormon church is bad. (laughs) We have a million videos that will do that for you. Yeah, we've already kind of discussed a couple of those aspects just in this video, but... So if you don't want to support those things and further the Mormon church's progress in trying to indoctrinate the people they already have and pull in more people that they don't, which is essentially what these influencers do, is they either profusely 
like inextricably add Mormonism within to their brand and to their content, or they keep it kind of quiet, which is what's happening yeah. with these people. It's like known, but it's kind of like, do they even go to church still? Because on Easter, they didn't even talk about Jesus. And other Mormon influencers would be like, oh, they didn't even talk about Jesus in their video on Easter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they might be a little more quiet about it. And who knows, maybe they're phasing out. Their kids aren't Mormon for the most part. Maybe they're not feeling it anymore. But Jared's still wearing garments. And so I think that answers most of our questions in that sense. Yeah. So I don't know if you believed why you would continue wearing the garment, because obviously it Nobody doesn't wants to do, do shit. That. No. But so. No. So keep that in mind when yeah. you support people like this, because the end game is always the same. Even if it's not their intention, they make Mormonism more palatable for people because people see these huge, loving families and they see these amazing Mormon people who adopt these kids and are like, oh my gosh, this is so wholesome. And the religion spews that families can be together forever. And who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Who wouldn't be yeah. sold by that you know, sales pitch? And so families can be together forever unless you don't pay us money and follow our rules, then you'll be separated forever and you'll die alone. So that's the part they don't tell you. <laughs> and that's called being swindled, my friends. Yeah. So that's why we encourage you not to support these people because they make Mormonism look eons away from what it actually is. <laughs> yeah. And it, it could be 100% unintentional because they were taught what I was taught and I had no idea about the absolute terrible things. So just to drive home the point, it's really admirable that they are able to bring children into their home that are displaced, trying to keep them together in what's left of their family at that time and supporting reunification with their biological parents and all of these things I love that. I think that's awesome. One of the first videos that was uh, still left up on their channel was her going to a radio station and talking about or doing some advocation work for um, children in the foster system and things like that. So I think that's really awesome. And they seem like really personable and nice people. Jared, I mean, the dude is a giant teddy bear. He's hilarious and just cute and everything like that. But that is also the thing that we always have to remember is that they're involved with a system that actively oppresses a lot of people and does actual harm to even more. And that's not to mention, you know, if they came across foster kids who did not end up staying with them, who their identities or sexual orientation did not align with the Mormon church, yet they were forced to go to the Mormon church, even though they didn't have to participate. Then you get to hear those lessons about how homosexuality is a sin and acting on homosexuality will send you straight to the bottom kingdom and things of that nature. So it's important to keep those things in mind because just because you're not joining the church doesn't mean you get, doesn't mean you don't doesn't, get subjected. To doesn't that. mean you can't be harmed by it. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for sticking with us on that. Let's just take a deep breath. <sighs> Hopefully, we were able to use as positive language as we could surrounding adoption. Um, if not, please let us know that we could do better. We're always stri striving to do a little bit better every time. Thanks for sticking with us. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, you missed your chance to win a candle for one, but if this is stuff that you would like to see in the future, hit that subscribe button. We got new videos every week. If you'd like to see some exclusive content like we've already talked about, you can check out our Patreon. We love our patrons, 300 strong. I'm not dividing my love for each and every one of those 313 people at the time of filming this video. They're all amazing. Doesn't matter how much, or how much they support us, they are all amazing in my eyes and I cannot thank every single patron enough. And that's not the only way you can support us. Just watching our videos and commenting and liking and participating in the, uh, the premieres and everything like that is just, it really makes us happy to see that we are doing something that is perceived by many people to be good. So thank you to each and every one of you. We love you. 
You can also support us by checking out our new designs on our Etsy store, Happy Brain Collective, and on our Teespring. The links to both of those are in the description. Get your holographic Garmies in a bunch stickers before they sell out because they were a very limited quantity. So head over to the Etsy store and get them before they run out. We'll probably do some other holographic things. I wasn't sure how they're gonna turn out, but they, they look pretty thing. sick. So we'll probably do some other stuff. If you want this cool metal style Satan's Ponzi scheme sticker, also head over there. I'm really proud of that because I commissioned that. It looks really sick. If you'd like to get in contact with us, we've got a couple different channels. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok. We've got a wealth of stuff over on TikTok. We don't post nearly as much now, but Jordan posts on Instagram on the daily. So that's really awesome. You can also join our Discord, which is really fun, amazing community, and a really easy way to get in contact with us. You can find the link to that in the description. In all, thank you very much for sticking with us. You're amazing, and we will see you next time.